thanks for that introduction, Gwen. Hey, Karsten. Nice hey to there. see you. Hey. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name's Sophie Purdom, and I write a newsletter called Climate Tech VC and invest in early stage businesses. And I'm excited to be talking with Karsten because agricultural technology or ag tech is near and dear to my heart. I um, also helped start a business in a similar space, but Karsten has been a leader in this for over a decade and really excited to dig in and share some of those insights with all of you. So we're speaking today with Karsten Teme, CEO and co-founder of Pivot Bio. Pivot is an agricultural technology company that produces a nutrient booster for plants. More specifically, Pivot's technology enables microbes to reliably produce nitrogen for cereal crops, something that only legumes can do naturally. So why are we speaking about legumes and cereal crops and microbes at a climate tech summit? Well, microbes replace the need in this case for farmers to apply synthetic nitrogen, which we know is a massive contributor to global greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, all of that aside, and 10 years ago before founding Pivot Bio, Karsten earned his PhD in bioengineering from the University of California, which is where you're joining us from today, Karsten. So bringing it back to today, great to, great to pick up. I'm looking forward to uh, getting into the weeds, talking agriculture, talking uh, climate, and, uh, and, and maybe what the path ahead looks like for everybody uh, who's joining us today. Perfect. I like to take this back to the beginning, especially when talking to founders, I find, you know, you've been a decade in this journey there's always stories to tell. So maybe take us back to the beginning. Um, my understanding is 10 years ago, you were maybe working in a lab with your co-founder today and you stumbled upon this technology or this concept and um, we're skipping over a lot, but fast forward today and, and yeah. Pivot's now one of those very special green climate unicorn businesses. So, so wind us back to the beginning, maybe when you were in the lab. Well, it, it, it is. It's uh, Pivot is an outgrowth of, of work uh, from my PhD research, my co-founder's PhD research. And, and it really just happened to be the right time to, to take something that was at the cutting edge of academic research and, and turn it into uh, a business that hopefully has a big impact uh, on the next century of agriculture. I, we we kind of paused on on nitrogen being uh, the core of, of what Pivot is. Um, every plant on this planet, nitrogen is, is essentially one of the, the required uh, fuel uh, sources to, to make that, that plant grow. So sun, water, uh, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. Those are the, the four essential building blocks of every plant. And, and only one of those, uh, it's, it's limiting in nature today. So we get most of our nitrogen through a synthetic uh, chemical um, process, uh, the form of Haber-Bosch fertilizer that's that's driven uh, the world's uh, modern agriculture for the last hundred years, and and what Pivot is positioned to do is is really tackle the inefficiencies of of that component of agriculture and 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 make everything better, and then in the process um, uh, eliminate some of the the, the negative uh, side effects of of using fertilizer. And uh, kind of going back that, that 10 years, uh, the, the PhD research at the core of Pivot is, is essentially the first complete blueprint on how we can use microbes to uh, do what a big fertilizer factory does. And, and so it, it became this roadmap for starting a company and building products and a, a business that, that can change things for farmers. I love the Haber-Bosch story. Maybe we should pause on Pivot for a second and go back a century further to the start of uh right before world war oh gosh world war world war one the, one the, right that's right well turn of the century the hot technology then was chemistry i uh, and and it was how do we how do we transform everything in the world around us because of discoveries in basic chemistry and i think one of the things that that a lot of really smart people realized is because of a growing world population, uh, we would be um, 
uh, food limited by the, the mid 20th century, unless we figured out a, a better way to source nitrogen uh, and, and use that in agriculture. Um, so there were uh, a lot of efforts to try to figure out ways to break the, the chemical bond in nitrogen gas. Um, nitrogen gas is two nitrogen uh, atoms triple bonded together and convert that into ammonia, uh, which is a form that plants can use as a, a fueled building block. And, and so there was a, a, a breakthrough on the academic side, some patents, and, and then uh, a, a licensing by BASF and an industrialization of that process by two guys, a Haber and Bosch. And, and, and because of that, we, we now can produce ammonia on a, an, a huge industrial scale. And so it really allowed us to go from uh, the previous form of agriculture uh, to one that could support a, a growing world population across the last hundred years. It's kind of a wild story, right? And mm -hmm. testament to science. Two guys who were pretty complicated personalities in and of themselves came together and, and had this breakthrough, which I believe they won two Nobel prizes for, for um, this ability to um, essentially fix nitrogen and put it into a usable form for fertilizer, but also it should be said for, um, uh, it was weaponized, right, as well for explosives. And, and so complex figures, complex history, and, and it saved us hypothetically from starvation, but in lots of ways, the Haber-Bosch process hasn't changed much a century later to today. And now we're on the brink of, you could argue, another potential global catastrophe, which is climate change and crazily agriculture is at the center of that again so dramatic wind up we totally is, <laughs> we got your telling a good story but this is where pivot really comes into play well it does and and you know if anybody wants to to uh read a great book on i know on what you're gonna the say process, the the alchemy of air uh really great read uh yeah. and it, you know now we're at a point where it, essentially that same analysis from 100 years ago could apply that we can't scale the system today. Um, and it's, it's really because of uh, inefficiency. So were we to try to uh, produce uh, uh, enough fertilizer to fuel modern agriculture for the needs of the next 50 or 100 years, uh, the, the side effects, the inefficiencies would overwhelm the system. Um, so, so today, the use of fertilizer uh, is, uh, is directly responsible for uh, CO2 emissions during the, the manufacturing and transportation process, the supply chain, uh, nitrous oxide emissions, because uh, nitrogen is lost from the field before a plant can capture it, uh, run off into our waterways where uh, that nitrogen fuels algal blooms and it creates dead zones in our oceans. Uh, there's more than 500 uh, of those around the world today. Uh, the biggest being in the Gulf of Mexico, it's, uh, it's, it's just massive. I think it's Right now, bigger than the, the entire state of Rhode Island, and uh, and 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 so all of that is is just inherent to the process of manufacturing and using fertilizer. Uh, about half of it globally uh, is is either washed away or degraded before the plant can capture it. And and there's a a better way forward, and that's um, some microbes can produce an enzyme which which does everything uh, a nitrogen fertilizer factory does. Uh, except it can produce that nitrogen on demand. And, and that means that you don't have to store that nitrogen in the soil. So you can produce it and spoon feed it to the plant and avoid losing half of your nitrogen budget to the environment. And, and that's the beauty of where we are today. For the first time, we have the science and the tools and the, the business environment to allow us to bring a, a, a step change, a, a true disruptive technology uh, into the marketplace. Amazing. Um, talk to us about the science. You know, there are a few competitors, peers in the fertilizer alternatives space right now, many on the biologics side, but also in the alternative, you know, um, decarbonized electrification plays like um, some smaller companies like Nitricity, for example. And there are a few on the alternative organics or nutrient delivery side. Um, but let's let's double click into the biologics. Um, you have this enzyme or a mm -hmm. microbe. Is this a 
seed coating? Is this a, you know, pumping up of the microbe with some additional energy source? How does it work and what kinds of crops does your product work on? Well, uh, at Pivot, we're focused on the major cereal crops of the world. And, and so between corn, wheat, and rice, half of the world's nitrogen fertilizer is, is consumed by those three crops. And so for us, uh, we take a laser focus on, on having the biggest impact in the shortest amount of time. I, I think the climate challenges we face uh, require very rapid action. And, and, and what we try to do is, is leverage the, the natural microbiome uh, of the crop. So a, a subset, some of the species of microbes that live in and on and around the roots of, of every plant on this planet can make this very special enzyme. And, and what they do is that the plant, um, when it's performing photosynthesis, it, it makes sugar. And a, a, about 30 or 40% of that sugar is exuded into the soil to feed its uh, native microbiome. Just like we have mi a microbiome in our gut, uh, the microbes in the soil are doing beneficial things for the plant. And so the, the trade-off is our microbes consume sugar from the plant and in exchange, they convert nitrogen in the air into ammonia and, and give that back to the plant. And, and the whole goal is uh, prevent storing any of that nitrogen in an inorganic form in the soil, because then that makes uh, both economics better for uh, a farmer and it makes the, the growing of the crop, the decisions that need to get made on the farm a lot simpler. And then the, the ripple effect, the byproduct is uh, our natural resources are much better protected. And, and that's uh, both beneficial for the grower and for all of us. Talk to us about customer traction. You guys have been on a, a real tear even during yeah. pandemic times. Where, where are you active right now? And, and what's the feedback from farmers? Well, one of the things I think that, that gets really interesting for me is, is, is thinking through opportunities at this moment in time uh, that the kind of business we can create is really only possible because of the, the current environment we're in. Um, there is an immense amount of support and funding available for uh, bringing uh, new technologies like ours to market. Uh, and it's also something where I think there is a, a hunger within the agricultural community for innovation. And, and so what we've built is a business model that uh, allows us to, to connect directly with farmers. Um, so we sell our product uh, directly to the, the folks that use it. And, and we've built a supply chain that allows us to, to ship our microbes directly to their farm. And, and that's not something that's typically possible in agriculture. Uh, normally, supply chains, connections with customers are controlled by a, a handful of multinationals. And, and I think because of the environment we're in, uh, it's, it's an opportunity to be able to uh, get to know our customer well, uh, iterate our product uh, based on their feedback, and and really do something dynamic within the industry. That's amazing that you're selling directly, or it's totally worth second, you know, double double tapping that. But that's really unique. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, in, you you're you know boots on the soil with growers. What are your scouts or um, you know sales folks or collaborators uh, hearing from growers when it comes to environmental challenges that they're feeling personally as P&L owners of their agricultural business? You know, it, it, one of the things that we try to do at Pivot is, is build a company that's going to be here for the long term. That, that uh, when we think about customer relationships, uh, it's, it's truly generational in nature. Uh, that, that farmer is thinking about being able to pass down the land to the next generation. They think about um, stewardship in in protecting their their biggest asset, uh, and 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 every year is simply about being able to make sure that that land is as productive as possible. So, we enter into um, any of our relationships thinking that uh, nitrogen is is a required purchase every year. It's not discretionary. Uh, you can't grow a crop without nitrogen as a fuel source. And that means our job is to make sure we help that, uh, that farm and that farmer uh, better position their business to get passed down to the next generation. So it, it really plays into how we think about uh, both relationship, 
product performance, and and ultimately trying to make that entire equation of farming uh, a little more reliable and and remove risk from the system. Talking about thinking in generations, Pivot's been around for about a decade at this point, Mm -hmm. and the world looks very different today than it did back in 2010. What are some of those most notable differences from a business builder's perspective, from your perspective in the, we will call it climate tech environment today versus back in 2010 when you were just getting started? I I think we're in uh, a a new era of what uh, what's possible from both a a technology perspective uh, and and a business environment. I, I I think one of the things that that makes Pivot possible now and and maybe not 10, 20, 30 years ago is we have the ability to to sequence DNA to start understanding that that the microbes in the soil, that living component of soil, is is doing really interesting things and beneficial things for the crop. I compare that with where computational capabilities lie today that that because we have exponential growth in in what's possible on a technology forefront it m- means that some of the big problems in climate are addressable for the first time and and I think we have uh, a a growing uh, momentum across all industries that the interconnected nature of our our society means uh, we can pay attention to things on on a global scale and on a climate um uh, integrating scale and and really start to uh, better connect um, different parts of the system. So for me, my passion is is ultimately can we help tell the story of the growers who use our product and and get all of us around the world, you know, global global consumers to understand how how we're connected back to that farm and how the decisions and the the uh, the advances made on that farm uh, benefit our lives through the things we buy and then the, the ripple effect on the planet. Well said. Um, I'm thinking about all the folks in the audience who might be building in this space or wanting to move into this space. Um, instead of the easy question, which would be what advice do you have for them? Maybe slightly different version of what do folks get wrong about operating in or investing in this space? What are some lessons learned from that side? Oh, I like that that twist on the question, and maybe one of the things I think about is um, we can't just try to do things the same as they used to be, but in a way that um, that may may be climate friendly. I, I think the really powerful ideas are the ones that do something that's never been possible before, and the ripple effect just happens to be climate friendly. So. When we've tried to design our products, it's it's by offering performance that that truly is disruptive in nature. The benefit to the grower isn't attainable with the incumbent product. We we go at the Achilles heel of fertilizer and all of its inefficiencies and how it performs, and because of that, we just get this added benefit that uh, that there's a, a massive massive impact on on the environment and and climate. So I, I think the more that we can tell uh, similar stories um, in in innovation across agriculture or, or other industries, the the more exciting it's going to get from an investing and a, a participation perspective. Love that. Amazing. Well, we're right up on time, and we've come a long way from a hundred years ago with Haber Bosch through to. 10 years ago and you were just starting out of the lab um, through to today and you're one of those few green unicorns, but hopefully more. Thanks for all the lessons learned and hard work and mud on your boots and um, really looking forward to more growth uh, from here. Thanks so much, Karsten. Well, thanks a ton. It's a pleasure. And uh, if anybody wants to reach out and connect, uh, Karsten at pivotbio.com, we'd love to, uh, to find ways to get you connected with our, our customers um, and, and potentially uh, with our path ahead. Phenomenal. Um, and if you're interested, audience, in hearing more about the deals and the news in the space or our market map deep dives, including one that we wrote about sustainable fertilizer pathways, 
feel free to check out Climate Tech VC and subscribe to our newsletter there. But for now, over and out and back on over to the SOSV Climate Summit. Thanks so much.